Today, I'm gonna to talk you through the most common mistakes that I see when people pour latte art. Hey guys, welcome back to the Artisti YouTube channel where we guide you through all things coffee. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and the bell icon because we're releasing new videos all the time. Now guys, I spend heaps of time in cafes, I train plenty of baristas and there's a heap of mistakes that I'm seeing just repeated throughout the place and people try and pour latte out at home and I get asked the same question a lot. So I'm here to talk you through some of the mistakes that a lot of people are making and hopefully you can resolve some of your issues and we can get you pouring better latte art even faster. So let's get into it. Today I'm gonna to talk you through some tips and let's start with the tools that you're using. So straight away, uh, your cup is gonna make a big difference on the latte art that you're pouring. So you can notice that we have nice bold cups here. That's an Acme & Co cup, but obviously when you're pouring takeaway cups, you still are going to have similar issues. It's really about the momentum of the milk moving through the cup. So I just wanted to point out those cups are one of the things that we highlight when we're pouring good latte out, and you'll see that. So I'll chuck a shot on. Now, I do want to mention that when you're making latte art, it is really important to have a good espresso shot to pour onto. If you don't have a good shot to pour onto, pour onto you're really going to struggle to get that nice mix of milk and crema and have a nice base to pour through. So make sure your espresso shot is on point, you've got good crema, and you're starting from the best spot possible. Now, again, coming back to the tools that we're using, your milk jug, I quite often go into cafes and they'll have a range of different milk jugs, different brands, and every now and then they nail it. They nail a nice latte up, but they don't realize why, and it might just be because of the shape of the spout they're using. Some jugs are wider, so go and grab your jug right now, and put in the comments below if you've been using the wrong jug the whole time and that's potentially been your issue. But there are specific jugs. Some can be really expensive and they actually are built for latte art. So have a look at that. These are just the, these are rhino wear um, jugs that we sell on our online store. We know that you can pull out good latte art with them. So um, there's a link down below to that. And plus there's plenty of links to a lot of the videos that we've done in the past about milk texturing, about um, improving your coffee making, so be sure to check them out. So we'll spin some milk in a minute and get onto that. So today I'm just going to prepare these two coffees and let's spin some milk. So you can't make a good espresso without good textured milk. So I haven't made a shot for a while and that was dripping a little bit slow, but it's going to have nice rich dark crema for me to pour through. So I might not serve that to a customer because I know it's going to be a little over extracted based on the dripping that I've seen there. <laughs> That's all right. All right, don't mind me. I just had to enter the phone because we are still running the business here day to day. So keeping it real. So I'm going to texture some milk. So we've spent heaps of time training on this and we've, we have lots of videos. We'll put links to below on texturing your milk. But if you're not texturing your milk right, you're just never really going to hit the mark on latte art. Now, if your milk is too thin, you'll see it pour through the coffee. And I'm going to just heat some milk here. And I, you notice that I'm not actually putting any air in that milk. And this is where you're going to set yourself up um, for failure, really. Now, temperature is a big part of te milk texturing as well. So you want to make sure you're hitting that 65. If you're really trying to nail latte art and you're not too concerned about the temperature, you might actually be aiming for more like 60, 55, because then you're, you're really eliminating any other variables. Now, let's just go to the other extreme and we'll just add plenty of froth in there. Great. So, we've got our shots ready. We've got our two types of milk. And let's see how we go. Even, even if I work this. Now, spinning your milk is a big part of this. And, and, but with thin milk, I'm just, I'm really going to struggle. Even if I do all the right tricks, I'm just not going to get there because I have nothing to really work with. Now, I put plenty of froth in this and I can bang out those bubbles, do all the right things. So spinning is a, is a big part of it, but if you've already got too much froth, you can do all this work, but you're just, you're not, you're not going to achieve what you're after. So 
let's make some more coffees and get closer to where we want to be. But thin milk's not going to work. Milk that's too thick is not going to work either. So let's go again. And we'll show some other mistakes that I see. So, well, yeah. So one of the most, one of the other most common things that I see in cafes, just day to day, I also see it. I see it in cafes with with good baristas, good baristas, but also obviously home homemakers. Everyone's they see it at home when you don't have the time to practice. Practice is going to be a big element to doing a latte art. It's not something that you do overnight. There's a real feel for it. You have to watch your milk. You have to understand where your crema is moving through the cup. So don't be put off if you've just got into the game and you want to start doing latte art, but you know you only make a couple of coffees a day, so I'm not even. So let's just be nice to ourselves. You do need to practice and get that right. So, so now I'm going to steam this milk how I would like it for latte art. So it's called latte art for a reason. I think it's called latte art for the reason that your milk really needs to be textured. The best latte art is with that latte uh, froth. You know, we're steaming it for a certain um, smoothness and that's gonna be the best result there. So there's two things here. There is the fact that people don't realize that the angle of your jug plays a big part of it. We might know that about the pattern, but what happens is this jug right now has even that much milk in it. Oh, let's, yeah, let's say this one, not that one. This one has a fair bit of milk in it. Now I only need this much and I purposely did these bigger jugs. So if your jug is really full, you're actually gonna to struggle to get an angle that's gonna get you close enough to the crema. So what I would suggest is always actually take a little bit out so you're as little milk as you can on there and that's gonna pour better latte out. Now I'm gonna just stick on this point and say symmetry. Symmetry is crucial. Without symmetry, you're gonna get movement through the cup that's just gonna create a whirlpool and you want that whirlpool when you're mixing, creating a canvas, but you don't want that when you're actually pouring a latte out. So let's watch this pour. If I lose my symmetry, even though I'm doing the right things, like I do want to spin my crema, I want that to mix through, I want that to be nice and blended. I want to make sure I'm spinning all the way up until the end. I want to create a canvas. So I've got this nice canvas, I've got something to pour onto, but if I am not symmetrical, I'll just get this wacky pattern and I'm uneven and it's not the result that you're after. We're, we're just, we're, symmetry is what makes these patterns beautiful. And they are what you create the base of a rosetta with. And that's, that's a big part of latte art as well. So on this one, even more to that example, if I have a really full jug, you can see that the angle of my jug is gonna struggle to get down close enough to the crema. And you're gonna just create this weird kind of fall. So what I'm gonna do, it's just mix that little back bit back in there. I want to get that out. The other pattern that I see is a lot of ferns. People are starting their pattern. They're going back way too early. So we actually want to, and this is what they do. They start their pattern and then they come back and then they're filling up here. And again, you're just creating these wacky patterns. So what we actually want to do is spend more time in the center of the cup and let the momentum do the work. So you're spending half the cup creating a canvas. You've got your milk and your coffee mixed together for about half the cup. And then latte art really happens in the last you know, 20 mil of that cup. And that's where all the magic happens. You basically want to finish your pattern as the cup is full. What we don't want to do is fill the cup up at the last point because then you're, you'll actually keep movement through the cup and you kind of mess up your latte art. So as close as they are, they're just not quite on the money. Okay, so that's all the mistakes that I see. Are you doing any of those mistakes or have you seen them before? Put it in the comments below, we read them all and we love to hear your feedback and see if this is helping because, and if you know of any other mistakes that other people are making that you can contribute to the community that we're building, we'd love to hear it. So, to wrap up, we're gonna get, I'm gonna make a nice latte art 
and a good coffee and I'll talk you through the steps so that you can follow the steps that I'm taking and now your latte out too. So let's just jump back in. So I'm gonna use a nice bowl cup Beautiful for latte art. Notice that when I pour this cup, I'm gonna hold it so my spout is actually facing my hand. That way, when I pour my rosetta, the base of my rosetta is gonna be at the base where the right-handed customer is pouring. If you know your customers well, and you know what left, whether they're left or right-handed, that would be a unique skill to have so that you can make the best experience for that customer. But I'll be pouring it for a right-handed customer. So I'm gonna put my shot on that started. Now, notice before I did use the big milk jugs just so I had what I needed for the example, but for this I'm just going to use the small milk jug that's going to give me the right amount of milk for my cup. It's got a good spout on it, again a nice run aware um, jug that's going to give me the right amount of milk that I need. Going to have a nice spout on it so it's nice and precise. Focusing on the shot that I'm pulling as well. I'm even gonna make it double ristretto, nice rich shot to pour onto. All right, let's spin some milk. So I would say, jump back into the other videos, we've got about spinning milk and texturing getting the right amount of air in that milk, the right about a temperature. Keeping the steam on spout clean because when I don't, everyone in the comments points that out. So thank you for everyone that has ever pointed out when I don't clean the steam wand. I appreciate it. So we've got our milk, all we need Let's break up that crema. Let's make sure it's spinning the milk all the way to the end so it's nice and blended. I'm gonna spend half this cup creating my, my canvas. And then I'm gonna get my nose as close to the crema as I can so that white really sits down. And then my cup is full and I lift as I drop. So there is my coffee. My right-handed customer can now pick that up and enjoy that drinking from the bottom of the the pattern there. And with all of those failures fixed, you should be able to produce a beautiful coffee like that. So, thanks for watching. Hope you've learned something. Hope your latte out looks that good. And if you have any comments of what you would do differently or if this has been helpful for you in any way, please put it in the comments below. We'd love to read them. If you haven't already, subscribe because we've got plans for heaps of new videos coming and we want everyone to be a part of the community that we're building. So like the video if you thought you learned something and share it with someone that could use some extra skills at the latte art. Guys, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. We'll see you soon. Cheers, bye.